Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. In the last video, Chris completed the little Mercedes A-Class to the point where it's actually now ready to go to the paint shop. We have got a new bumper, I did mention it in the last video and quite a lot of people said, but you didn't show it. So we got the bumper there and you can see, highlighted in yellow, it's actually got a little bit of damage on it. Just a little, little press in there from actually a front number plate. So we need to get that repaired. The seat belts, I believe, are in this box. They've come back from Airbag Team. This one is actually going off to paint today. So I need to crack on and get it done to the point where I might as well get the seat belts back in it. I want to get this back bumper bar back on there. I've just got some dinner throw out, spray out the end of the chassis legs, etc., etc. Guys, I thought I might as well get some of it done now. It can't go till the end of the day. And as much as I do now means it's a lot less we got to do when it comes back, hasn't it? So let's crack on and try and get this one back together. Straight into it here, guys. Luckily, undone that box and it was the rear seat belt. So just two 40 torques on the top there for the seat belts and then two inside. There is only obviously the mounting point and then the other end of the seat belt. Bit of dinner troll up the end of those chassis legs and then straight on with that bumper bar. And there's three thirtings each side. So all done. So, bumper bar, that's all on there, completely bolted on. I've got that new plastic guide that needs to bolt in here, but I need to get the bolts out of that one and it is quite bent up. So I'm gonna have to have a little bit of fettling and playing around with that in a minute. One will come out fine, but this one here, just the end of it's bent down. So we'll, we'll get that out, no problem at all. Moving on to the inside, passenger seat belt, very, very easy, that's in, driver's seat belt's in, and I've even put that cover on. I've just stood that up because I see there's quite a lot of dust and muck in the back of here. So what I'm gonna actually do before I start bolting everything down is actually give that a quick vacuum out, give it a good clean up. But the passenger seat belt's bolted in. I haven't got the buckle bolted in on this one yet, but like I said, I wanna get it cleaned up first. So I'll get that done and then just continue on with it. Really, ideally, a lot of this can go back in. Certainly all of these panels and the lower panels can all go back in but the back panel I don't think can because of the back lights. But we'll get to that when we get there. But I don't think there's anything... I can put this actual panel back on, but I can't put this one back on, guys, because we're going to need to leave those rear lights out for when he paints it, aren't we? I'll just continue doing as much as I can and getting it done. But isn't it funny? There's, like, computers in the back of this one. There's a sensor there. And yellow wires. Is that... The seatbelt airbag sensor, you just don't know if that takes a bit of a knock, is that what's caused them rear seatbelts to go off? Because none of the other seatbelts have gone off. The front ones are all fine. I guess when we plug it in, we'll know, but it is coming up on the dash rear seatbelts as a fault, nothing else. So anyway, enough waffle, let's carry on. Guys, I didn't want to time lapse anymore. I just wanted to crack on with it and you're gonna see us build it up once it's actually back from the paint shop. So. I kind of didn't want to bother just wasting my time recording all of that when it's all got to come back off again, hasn't it? But the bumper, obviously I've secured it here into the bracket under the light and just put one cable tie in it there. And then the other side, I've just put one bolt in the lights as well. Of course, this has got to have a little tiny bit of filler in here and there's no bracket on there because it was actually broken and we need to get that. But perfectly adequate to drive now i can chuck the tray plates and drive it one thing i did just notice though which is a bit of a let me just show you in the boot so i pieced it all back together all of the panels are back in but of course you have to pull these out to get the back lights out don't you so i've just pulled them and i've put one bolt in each side i didn't bother putting that on again because the bracket for the bumper behind there the the black plastic bit it had quite a lot of movement up and down on it and left and right and we need that to be right so it's best to just leave that off and then we can adjust that after but the one thing i did just notice which is a bit of a fail from me i'm afraid is i've plugged it in i've code read all the codes there was a lot and i've cleared them all but as soon as you start it up now watch Let's turn that radio down. Front right malfunction, consult workshop. Guys, that driver's side belt has gone off. So 
yeah, a bit unfortunate there, but I am going to have to ship that out. Third brake lamp, we know that's not working, don't we? Because of the, it's not even plugged in. But yeah, seat belt's gone. Unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to. I'm just waiting for Claire to arrive. Chris is busy with Dan today doing the building work, so Claire's going to come and meet me here, and she's going to follow me up to the paint shop. We we'll drop this off and. Uh, we'll pick up as soon as it comes back don't forget guys when you're going out to purchase a car always use car vertical you don't know the history and there's so many unscrupulous sellers out there selling written off cars and they will not tell the people they're selling them to of course we're 100% honest and transparent with the cars that we sell and I think the channel name says it all salvage rebuilds so we are rebuilding salvage so of course this one Mercedes-Benz A-Class Theft, okay in green there. Odometer in green, okay there. Finance and legal in green. And damage clearly highlighted there in amber. And then when you scroll a little bit further into the check, you can go more in depth with the vehicle and find out when it was damaged, what category it is, and if it has been written off one time, because we've seen that time and time again where a vehicle's advertised as damage repaired. And when you check it, it's actually been damage repaired two or three times, which is unbelievable. I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the channel. Guys, they now do an app. It's very, very user-friendly. And of course, there is that handy, message button in the bottom right hand corner if you did do get stuck and want to ask any questions you can hit that and ask questions on this particular vehicle you can see there it says s repairable structural damage there is a link in the description or use the code up on screen now well, i'm not going to give away the next video but this is actually the second car i've picked up from the paint shop today and there's another one to pick up tomorrow so looks like we're having a good old turnaround Jason absolutely knocked this one out of the park. The bumper's in the back of it, Chris. Yeah. And he, um, he's done both quarters yeah. and right up all the way around the A pillar. But yeah. you can see the match is absolutely perfect, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a mad rush for me. I want to get this unloaded and get the driver's seatbelt out of it, get that sent off, get it done so that we can finish this car and put it all completely back together. So I'm going to get it unloaded and get that straight out. It's a couple of days later. And as you can see, I've got that driver's seat belt straight out and round the post office. It was a mad rush to get it there by 3.30 so it could go next day. So I sent that out. Airbag team received it yesterday. Yes, it had gone off. So they've repaired it, stuck it first class next day delivery, and it is due back here in about 45 minutes. So we're just going to crack on with this one now. We think we've got all of the parts. I have literally gone through everything while the car was away just to make sure we've got it all there's the new bumper and on our old bumper this lower skirt was actually broken i've got it there but i managed to pick a lower skirt up off of ebay for 35 pound the chap took it off his car originally and put an amg one on it so it's in lovely condition the only thing is i can just turn it over without damaging anything as you can see god i'm so unprepared there all these little inserts are black everything and on the car they was actually chrome so these ones on this bumper all of the chrome actually looks all right guys that's the gate with a seat belt i'll be back in a sec big thank you to airbag team for the quick turnaround guys it is not sponsored where was we these chrome trims are actually undamaged so i'm gonna to have to actually remove those chrome trims and swap them over to that one i know someone's gonna say leave them black they look better but there is like a chrome grill in the front there's that chrome all the way around the doors it just make it look a bit mix match so we are going to go with the original silver on there right we are going to start Building up this back bumper, I think, swap the loom over. I know there's a little bit of soldering to do on the wiring. We had to get a new plug and a new sensor for it. So we'll get on with that first. Working in perfect harmony here. Chris is actually checking where the lower piece goes and then moved straight on to the spoiler and other associated bits inside that boot lid while I carefully removed those chrome trims, making sure I didn't break any of the clips off. 
putting them back on the new bumper. Once they're broke, they're a nightmare and that you just can't get them to hold on and you don't want to glue them up. It, they just end up falling off eventually. So I've got all them off. We've got it all on the bumper and it's ready to go. Poor Chris, he still ended up doing it because I ordered these guys. I know in the last video, someone said, where do you get those? And this company is solder stick and 500 in here and they've give us this little code coupon code return 15 for 15 percent off and they are you said they're brilliant aren't they yeah so it saves all the solder and the heat shrink is already built into yeah, it so right. do you want to do a little bit of a demo on one you can see the heat shrink down there and then you see the solder melting in the middle absolutely brilliant Yeah, that's fantastic. And now, of course, we'll put a bit of that same tape around the outside. That's it. And you'll never know that's been repaired, guys. So, yeah, solder stick. Let's just show that in case I forget to put it in the description. Here's 15% off your next order. Uh, I'll put the link in the description, guys, and you can all use ready. that. Near enough ready here. There is two parts on this bumper that actually needed pop riveting on, and they've been removed before the paint. On, no, this bumper never come with them, so we had to get one off our old bumper and one actually come, luckily, with that lower valance. I was holding the bumper still there while Chris got them on and then straight on with the bumper. Little bit of messing around here. Underneath that backlight, the bumper got hooked, so we just whipped the backlight out, pushed it on, and the backlight in. How lovely does that look, guys? All gone back. Let's include a picture of when we bought this car. And look at it now. I do always say, as much as you go and get all of the bits for it, there's always that little something, isn't there? I didn't realise we needed that reflector. So I've just rung the dealer. They've got it in stock, so I'm going to get that today. And if you remember in one of the earlier videos, we had to actually remove the seal covers outside. The under tray's inside, but the seal cover's outside because once it's on the ramp, of course... The legs get in the way and you can't get underneath it or get the seal covers off. So Chris has got both of them there. We didn't break one clip getting them off, which was handy. So we can, yeah, give them a little clean up on all the edges that you can't actually get to. We're going to get them fitted and then pull it in the workshop or maybe even do the seatbelt out here. But we're moving along pretty quick with this one. And I'd say it's definitely going to be done in this video. On with a passenger side skirt, nice and easy, few clips and three little push fittings underneath. Turning the car around, getting ready for that driver's side one. Chris had a little bit of trouble here with the side skirt, one of the clips was still in the car, so why, he went, why he's messing around getting that clip out to put into the side skirt first, I went and got the driver's seat belt, unboxed that and got that ready to put in. He managed to get that little clip out, click that side skirt on and we're straight on to the seat belt. This seat belt was actually very, very easy, but the trims around it were a nightmare. The metal clips that hold in that bottom piece of trim, some come off with the trim, some were still underneath the rubber, so it was a bit of a pain. We got there in the end and it's all done. So side skirts went on very, very easy, guys. And that seat belt was a bit of a pain. But I started the car up after I fitted the seat belt and it still had the airbag light on. But I've just done a quick scan on it. Fire in the hole. There's your airbag light. And let's turn that volume down. Out it goes. And it's got no more faults. Nothing showing at all. So I think we're pretty much done inside. We are not going to time lapse any more of it. There's been a few little bits. We're going to continue fitting up the inside of the tailgate boot lid and I need to go and get that light. Not sure if I'm going to take this for a run yet and pick the light up or whip over in my van but we need to get it on the ramp and put those under trays back on as well and I think that's pretty much it Chris and it we're there with it. We're definitely going to be wrapping this one up I'd like to think. Let's get on. So the main stealer pick up the reflector. I must be the only person that's actually in the Mercedes covered in dust and dirt. Everyone's here buying nice new cars. Let's see how we get on. It was really cheap, so 
shouldn't call this one a main stealer. £16.71 with the VAT. Let's get back and get it fitted. A bit of a mad dash there to the dealer, but the reflector is in there. And while I was gone, Chris has actually fitted the A220 diesel badge. So I know the car looks a little bit crooked. We had to let it down onto a block because the ramp was quite tight. I'm going to whip this straight over, get it on the alignment machine. Just make sure all of that is bang on. And then, of course, we get it validated. Here we go, the final. You always know when we're coming to the end, guys. We know I am time lapsing at the car wash. So just a little bit of wheel wash on the wheels and then I blow over, quick shampoo off. They stayed right away from the back bumper, the quarters and the boot lid. Rinsed it off and as usual, come out lovely. A little bit of a foul there on the Isle of Sheppey. I got all the way to the halfway road and there was actually a car on its roof. Yeah, on your way to A2s, weren't you? On the way to A2 tyres. Fire brigade there cutting the roof off. Police had the road shut and they was turning everyone round. Right on school time as well, Chris. Should have seen all the buses yeah. trying to turn around in the little road. But the car has come out beautiful. I still went to the car wash you would have seen there in the time lapse. And you also would have seen how far away they was from the back. They just rinsed the back off, but the rest of it needed a good wash. Don't get me wrong, that wash it's had has highlighted a few little stone chips in the front, but yep. it is two years old now, and I know eagle eyed people are going to notice that line in the back light. Now, that was the only one Eddie had at the time, but he did say just use that, like put that in it for now, and he's actually going to have a look for one for us. But overall, Chris, I'm well happy with how that's come out. Yeah, it looks well, doesn't it? It looks lovely. All cleaned inside. And it all cleaned up as I expected it would. Yeah. 2021 car. Really, really happy with it. So while I've been out, Chris has been putting the numbers together. But that's another one wrapped up, mate. Yes. Yeah, just got to go back for tracking. Check the tracking yeah, at some I'll, point. Yeah, I uh, should whip over there tomorrow morning, get the four-wheel yeah. four balance and the tracking checked. And I think that's it. That's a, a right. wrap. That's a wrap. Let's get in there and crunch the numbers on it. What an absolute beauty that car has turned out. It really is nice. And I'm going to be completely honest. I'm actually looking forward to going home in that tonight. And I'm actually going to run around in it for a little while. It really is a lovely car. While I was out there, Chris has put all the numbers together. And I'm really, really surprised and happy. So this is really nice, guys. Let's get straight into it. So, purchase price, including the finder's fee. Now, so this did come through somebody that watches the channel, and it was one of their, the company they work for, have got 100 vehicles on fleet, and that is one of their vehicles. So that's why there was actually no pictures of it as well, because it never made it to an auction. Straight away, her husband watches, she messaged me and said, Rob, this has just come through. I deal with all the vehicles. Would you like us to buy it back from the insurance? I was like, absolutely we would. That's a lovely late car and we'd really like it. And she knew the price, of course. So the purchase price, including the finder's fee, was 6,500 quid. You wouldn't have got that on Copart for that money. It's probably worth just mentioning we will always pay a finder's fee circumstances yeah sorry chris hasn't got his mic on there so you might not have heard him but he did say just reiterate that we do pay a finder's fee if somebody comes to us with a car and we end up buying it what i will just quickly add in there is some young lad does keep sending me copart listings yes, saying i found this for you how much have i earned and obviously it don't work like that guys so yeah six and a half grand lovely bit of salvage for that money collection we sent Nick up to get it, £270. Lower valance, I said I've got that on eBay, £35. Someone did reach out to us on Instagram and said, I've actually got one of them, Robin, you can have it. But unfortunately, I didn't realise that we needed it until we looked at that one, our one, and see that it was damaged. So I had it still, didn't still have his message, so we ended up buying one. The tailgate, we won't get into the story of that, but it ended up at £170 after the little bit of refund. Rear bumper, Eddie didn't have one, so I actually had to buy one off of eBay, off of another bumper guy, 
that had a little bit of damage on it, and that was £70. Rear light we got from Eddie, so uh, we've got nothing down there. We haven't given him anything for it yet, and like I said, we struggle to give him anything, so we just really look after him at Christmas. Rear panel plus the light panel, genuine from Mercedes, deli and, that bumper. And, the and the strengthener that goes in the top of the bumper, direct from the dealer, delivered to the door, next day as well, £346. They're so good on the parts prices for those Mercs. We'd definitely do another one. The crash bar I got off of eBay, £60. Seat belts, £330. Sounds dear, but it's not. I didn't know the front one was gone, so I just shipped him the back ones, and he sent me a postage label, repaired them, sent them back. Then No, he sent me two seat belts. He did, sent me two replacements, and I've sent him back our old ones. And then I sent out that seat belt on Monday, first class next day, They've repaired it and sent it back. So I think we got looked after there, 330 quid for three seat belts. Materials and paint plus glue. glue, which Chris used on the back panel, was £120. And just for the materials, guys, welding wire, grinding discs, sanding discs, spot weld drill bits, the glue, best seam guess. sealer, best guess. best guess. So we we just add it all up. And it does all add up, doesn't it? Especially when you've got to go and buy a roll of wire for the welder. Oh, yeah. I can't remember how much it was and the gas. Yeah. It's not cheap, is it? Reflector and a little bracket that goes in the boot. So when that car got hit in the passenger side, it actually hit the boot carpet because it's quite a thick one. And it's got a, like a little plastic bit that it dives into in the end. It actually snapped it out of its bracket. But that was only three quid, that bracket. Uh, where was we? So the reflector and the bracket from the dealer, £22. With a VAT. Dealer prices are brilliant. Paint shop. He's a very, very good friend of ours, Jason. £550. Got tracking down here, but we haven't had it done yet. And the balancing, £40. Quid. The valet I just had done was £20. Which gives us a pre... A total, sorry... Eight thousand five hundred and thirty-three pound. One more thing we've left off the postage cost of sending the seat belt. Oh yeah, eleven pound postage. That's not going to be in these numbers, but I did send it special delivery. Eight thousand five hundred and thirty-three pound. What a car for that money, guys. We've had a flick through eBay. That is a twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand pound car. But that one is currently trading at about 26,000 quid. We don't sell cars at retail money. We don't sell cars on the cheap. We sell cars trade money or below. And because that car is a Category S, we are going to ask £18,000 for it. It's going to be the cheapest one on the internet or the cheapest one out there for sale. And that is going to give us... The best pre-tax profit we've had I think so. since we started the channel of £9,467. <laughs> We'd like one of them every month, wouldn't we? we? Would, yes. We wouldn't mind one of them once a quarter. No, that is definitely the best profit we've had. And what a lovely job as well. It really wasn't that much, was it? I know it is a lot of work still, but... It was a nice job to do, wasn't it? Especially the way we got all the bits for it. We got all those bits new. There wasn't no messing around, drilling off a second-hand panel to then stick on a second-hand panel, guys. It's been absolutely brilliant. And nine and a half grand profit is certainly not to be sniffed at, is it? So that is the end of today's video. And that is the end of the series on the Mercedes A220 AMG line. Don't forget, drop your comments and your thoughts in the comment section down below. We want to hear what you think of it. Follow us on Instagram for your chance to buy one of our vehicles or to reach out to us at Salvage Rebuilds. Guys, don't forget, always include your telephone number. You can also follow Chris on his personal one at Salvage Rebuilds Chris. And we do not have a Facebook account. Don't forget, like, subscribe and share. And we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.